Hi everyone, we're going to be studying Her First Ball by Catherine Mansfield. Catherine Mansfield was a modernist writer. This is an era, a time, when um, the writing style was a little bit different. Um, it was a time of change where women are becoming aware that they didn't have the same rights as men. And Catherine Mansfield was born in Wellington in New Zealand and then went to live in England. But she's um, considered to be a New Zealand writer. And she wrote a lot about women, about their feelings, about their thoughts. And she used the, first, the third person narrative. Um, but the way she wrote, we really got to feel and understand the women in her stories. She, character is really important in um, Catherine Mansfield's writing and she uses a lot of language features which we'll look at to express her ideas. So here's a picture of Catherine Mansfield. She died when she was quite young. This is a picture of a drill hall. So it, it was a hall that was used for the army to practice their drills and um, but also obviously doubled as a place that you would have a ball um, just as we would do the same today if you have a hall it might have other roles as well as being a place where you have a ball it was a very exciting occasion for this young girl she writes about because she came from um, the country she wasn't sophisticated now the word sophisticated um, I'm going to write it down for you. Um, she was not sophisticated. This means that she didn't understand um, the way of life, um, the way things were in the cities. She was still quite naive. spelling there. She was quite naive and innocent. And when she went to this ball, she had to go um, with a chaperone. They went with chaperones. So a chaperone would be someone who was older than the girl, probably their mothers or their grandmothers. And so there would not be a lot of freedom around young men. Now, um, just, you might want to read here about Catherine Mansfield, about the fact that she talks about the female experience where women did not have the same rights as men and they were just becoming aware of this. So in the, her story, we do see the idea of, Kath, of these young women who they couldn't stay at the ball dancing in the same way that the old man did. When they would be older, they would be up on the stage. Now, the main ideas um, are, that we'll look at is the loss of innocence, um, the fragility of youth. That means that youth, being young, does not last. It's very fragile, can easily be broken. So um, it's a, her loss of innocence as for, so almost moving from a child to becoming more of an adult. Um, but Catherine Mansfield tells us a lot about the people at the ball. Um, there's definitely a feeling that um, the ball is trivial. Not very, by that word, suggesting that it's not very important. And there's a feeling, the a feeling that the um, people are also very trite, silly. And another word, affected. Now, affected is a, quite an important word because you'll probably need to look it up in your dictionary, but she's trying to show that the people at the ball have tried to make themselves appear more sophisticated. Appear to be, they try to make themselves sound like they're a little bit more mature and modern. 
And so the way they talk, you will notice they use words a lot that you wouldn't hear always in everyday speech. Like, oh, darling. Calling someone the term darling, it's very affected. So there's this sense of Leela being very um, innocent and not knowing how to speak this way. And the way she is kind of compared with these people at the ball. So there's definitely a contrast between the innocence of Leela and the affected, sophisticated ways of the others. Okay, so um, the first thing we're wanting to do is to show the, the well, that Kathy Mansfield wants to do is to show this whole excitement and the contrast. Um, so the excitement of Leela and the contrast of how she sees the ball and everyone else. So what we're going to do is just go to the first ball here, and I'm going to um, help you just move through it to see the different language features she's used and how she shows her different ideas. So the first thing that you see here is um, she uses quite a lot of personification and metaphors. So this first one in yellow, perhaps her first partner was a cab. Here we see an example of personification. So right from here, we can see um, perhaps her first real partner was the cab. Well, a cab, which is a vehicle with a horse, could not be a partner. Um, but it's a. It, we start right away with a with some personification. And this goes on um, again at the end where they bowled away like waltzing lampposts and houses and fences and trees. There is once again personification and we this creates a sense of excitement and movement. Um, waltzing is a very positive word, it's a dance. So um, these are very happy images. At the same time she's also used um, a simile where her hand rested the, the bolster, which is a small cushion where her hand rests, it felt like the sleeve of an unknown man's dress suit. So this is um, the whole building up this image of the cab being her partner. Um, you also, one of the things that you'll notice here, so um, here we go, noted for her use of personification, metaphors and similes, but also she uses a lot of intensifiers, strong adjectives and adjectives. Now, an intensifier is a word like to, or really, or absolutely, to make things sound very strong, to emphasize how excited she is, but also how meaningless it is too. Um, you'll notice that there's quite a lot of, of um, direct speech showing the words that the people said to create a sense of it all really happening. Um, so you must be looking out for the use of direct speech, using a lot of the affected language of the time. So I'm going to tell you what the um, affected language is. So look here. Oh dear, how hard it was to be different like the others. Notice that she's used an exclamation mark there. That's to show excitement. So the, what we call a lot of exclamatory statements as well. So we're going to write that. Um, right. Now we've got another, once again, another... Um, Similarly here, where her cousin's little dark hair pushing above her white fur-like flowers through snow. Notice that this whole, um, in this whole story, there is, um, the story shows all the small things that um, Leela sees and hears. 
they all seem much very um, bigger and more important than usual. Okay, this is to show that her excitement. So notice that she looks at very little things that suddenly become quite big things. And you'll see this all the way through where she says things like, um, um, she notices things like um, the man where he's, let me see if I can find an example. Here you go, took a minute thread off his sleeve. She notices tiny little things like taking a minute thread off his sleeve or the, his gloves. Um, she got so excited about the fact that he threw, Laurie threw, threw away, the, threw away the, um, the wisps of tissue paper from his gloves. Now that's just such a silly little thing, but to her it seems so big and so important. Okay, now continuing on, look here. This is some um, direct speech that someone says. This is what um, her cousin, the boy cousin says. Look here, darling, he said. The third and the ninth is usual twig. Notice here the use of the word darling. Um, this is very affected and it's also very much the speech of the day. And she says, oh, how marvelous to be a, have a brother. An exclamatory statement again. And look at that word marvelous. That's a very, very strong um, positive adjective. So, and you'll notice the use of that all the way through these very positive words like excitement. Um, there's another exclamatory statement. I've never known your hair to go up more successfully than it has tonight. What an unimportant thing, girls, to have your hair go up, go up. Um, as if it's how you do your hair is so important. And here we've got another example of the gay pavement, gay couples floating through the air, their little satin shoes chased each other like birds. Once again, the excitement showing movement and the excitement using a simile. More direct speech. Um, also, do you remember us talking about hyperbole? It was this exaggeration. Look here. The noise was deafening. Well, the noise wasn't deafening, but that's what we call, and I'm going to write it here, deafening. This is hyperbole. Um, there's also, you'll notice a lot of, um, here's another example of personification, a great quivering gas of, uh, jet of gas. Couldn't wait. It leaped almost to the ceiling. It was so excited. So it seems like, all the things that aren't human are becoming human because they're so excited too. And um, notice the word quivering, and you see this word twice, shaking. And we notice how it means to shake, and Laura's hands, Leela's hands shake. There's this feeling, everything's so excited and moving. Um, there's also something in this um else that she uses a lot of. And I want you to look here at irony. She uses irony. Now, so, so if we use irony sometimes, we're almost making a little bit of fun about people. Um, it's you and I know something about them that they don't know. So where the writer and the reader know the opposite is true. So look how silly this is. She's looking for an invisible hairpin. Well, an invisible hairpin, that's what it's called. That's the name of it because you can't see it in your hair. But she's making a joke because it's so extraordinary she can't see the single invisible hairpin. So I don't know if you can, you need to look at that for a while, girls, to find the humor in it, but it's quite funny. So Catherine Mansfield, you must keep thinking about the writer. She's making a lot of fun um, at the expense of these pe people just to show how silly and meaningless all this really is. It's not really that important. And she's trying to show us that. There again, you see the use of this language. Powder my back, there's a darling, cried someone else. Um, once again, here we've got hyperbole, miles and miles of frill. Um, this is showing us... Um, exaggeration. Hyperbole is exaggeration and there's a lot of this 
for emphasis. Okay, there we go, darling little pink and part um, programs. You can see there's the word quivering appearing again. Feeling, strong words about feeling, longing. Here we see gazing, gleaming, golden floor. We've got the use there of alliteration. The floor is very important. They keep talking about the floor. Um, how heavenly, look at that absolutely strong um, adverb, repeated. So there's use of repetition as well. Um, when we go on further, we see more positive um, adverbs, eagerly, um, lots of, of verbs, flying, gleaming, breaking, scattering, sending, all these um, present participles, gleaming, breaking, giving a sense of movement. But also here, this whole thing is actually a um, metaphor. Um, he was tossed away on a great wave of music. The music doesn't actually come flying over the gleaming floor, but he, she's suggesting that it does. Um, once again, look, gliding over the golden floor, we see this idea repeated again. We saw see more, uh, another very strong adjective, tremendous. Um, here's irony. I think it's most beautifully slippery, said Leela. She thinks it's most beautifully slippery, but the irony is that, the, is that the old man will say to her, ah, where does he say it to her? He says, um, and you'll say how unpleasant these polished walls, floors are to walk on. So he shows her the reality of what it will be like in the future. So he refers to those floors. Um, it seems that all the colors become one. So that azaleas were no longer separate flowers. They were pink and white flags streaming by. It's another metaphor. And um, continuing with the positive words, blissfully, her looking at all the minor, minuscule little details. Look at the little detail here on his sleeve. Um, another positive adjective, thrilling. She says that she, she was only at the beginning of everything. But ironically, the opposite, she finds out that this is just the beginning of the end. Another positive word, dazzling. Now notice now suddenly here, that she's talking about up until now, it had been dark, silent, mournful, solemn. So she's saying in a way life was quite dark. And that kind of tells us, it's a little bit of foreshadowing. It shows us that there's something to come here um, that's going to be a little bit negative. All right, so she's with her partner, and then she suddenly sees the old man, and suddenly we see some negative words. Shabby, his, his coat was shabby, increased, button off his glove, whereas before she only saw the little minute thread, now she's seeing a button off a glove. So it's this contrast of before and after with this man and how she's noticing different things. Um, the old man takes her and um, she's aware of his age and we start to see some negative words like wheezed. He wheezed. That's a very negative word. Um, awkward couple. Suddenly the couple that used to these couples that were so beautiful, here's another negative word. They're awkward. He says something gloomily, bald head. And then she tries to stay positive with using the word marvelous. But things are changing for her. Um, and here he tells her, this is really important, the reality of what her future is like. She will be one of those women. Um, and she will smile away like the poor old dears up there and point to her daughter. Um, and you'll say how unpleasant these polished floors are to walk on, how dangerous they are. A, Madam Twinkletoes, said the man softly. So and this is really an important um, paragraph because it changes her whole experience. Um, Leela gave a little light little laugh. She did not feel like laughing. And here she says, was the first ball only the beginning of her last ball after all? How quickly things changed, why happiness didn't last forever. So somehow at this point here, she has lost her innocence. And she says she wants to stop. 
And then we have a metaphor of a little girl throwing a personification of a, throwing a pinafore over her head and crying. But it doesn't last for long, and that's the thing that happens. Suddenly, again, the couple's paraded, um, and um, but presently, a soft, melting, ravishing, very positive adjectives begins, and somehow she um, she's changed here. Stiffly is very different to the way she was before. Haughtily, very different. She's become more adult, and her feet glided, glided. And everything became a beautiful frying wheel. So she's now suddenly back in the ball again and feeling positive. And so positive that she doesn't even recognize the man again. So this is a really showing us about how we grow up, we lose our innocence and continue on with life. Um, thank you for listening.